so top of the morning to you. We're back down in Bradenton and this is a project we started about six months ago. We did phase one over here in the understory. I don't know if you guys remember this one. It's on a beautiful river. Robbie show him some of that drone footage. I'll get it out back again. And today we're back. Actually, we started yesterday to do phase two, which is out here in front of the gate. It's kind of a low area. We're raising it up with some fill dirt, ran a main line over there, adding some irrigation. And then we're coming back into this zone one area and we're expanding upon this bed on this side and kind of finishing another long bed that was on the south end of the center planting. So the original planting here was four large beds. They filled in quite well. Perennial peanut is doing great here. Mimosa is doing great. Longevity, Okinawan spinach doing really good. Blue porterweed. Got some of that butterfly pea here on the trellis. Here's that porterweed filling in. Sisu spinach really doing its thing. And longevity spinach over here something that we're actually adding in on this next phase is more citrus trees and mark really wanted to have some citrus and the fact that he has this oak overstory i think it's worth giving it a try we wouldn't put those out in full sun um, you know putting them around other plants in a polyculture in an understory kind of bringing them back closer to their native habitat because citrus is native to asia comes from the jungle it didn't grow in you know fields and straight rows without its friends without living soils so if you're gonna have a chance of growing citrus here in Florida, I promise you the understory is the best place and especially when we have more dappled light like this. So this bed right here is gonna be the one getting citrus and this bed is actually extending down about another 20, 25 feet on that end. And just yesterday, they had some more mulch dropped off. This is where we had the fill dirt brought in. And Mark, you did a great job at sourcing materials for this project. Definitely helped to offset some cost rather than us hauling it in, paying to buy that mulch. It can cost anywhere from 20, to forty dollars a yard delivered so when you get it for free like this you do the deal diligence you do the legwork it's definitely going to help offset the project um, big big deal you know there's not only a couple piles here big pile over there on the far east side of the site um, makes a huge difference in cost especially when we're talking about building organic matter that is the most expensive part of our projects you know we're building soil um, we need a lot of mulch we need a lot of compost we use a lot of amendments and of course a lot of plants to shade the soil Really cool fire pit area here. And I want to give Mark a shout out for this stove because I am absolutely in love with this thing. Um, we did a little bit of a trade out. Mark brought me one of these stoves a few months ago. I think I have a smaller model. His is a little bigger. It's got the cooking grate on top. And this is all stainless steel, American made. Um, what really cool about it is it's smoke free. Um, I think it's called the Brio. So what is it? B-R-E-E-O. The name's up there on the top really love the new stove so shout out to mark boaters republic if you guys are here in the tampa bay area fort myers area i believe sarasota pretty soon you know these are local guys really awesome apparel shirts merch um really cool local shop for so fishermen boaters there's people that are outdoors they specialize in all kinds of cool apparel some fishing gear i'm actually going to go by there when i leave today and check the place out I have not been to the store yet myself but getting back to the landscape over here, Society Garlic's doing really good. Firebush have filled out. Mimosa's kind of starting to do its thing in travel. A little bit of chop and job already happening on those nanners. And Mark's been kind of collecting some plants that we're gonna include into the landscape for him while we're doing this. Taros have filled out really nice. This bed's probably done the best out of all three of them. And since I was here last, they have really expanded their chicken zone in this area. I believe it's probably three times the size. I see Mark's over there working on another chicken coop. Not sure if that one's going back in this area. I need to get need to get the lowdown on that, but there's a new one coming in. And check these guys out. He's got some silkies in here. What's up, dudes? Top of the morning to you, ladies. I don't know if there is any dudes in here. Is there a rooster? Oh, look how cute you are. Beautiful chickens. And after I fin this finished this project, Mark said, hey, I really want to get some mango trees in the ground before the next phase. I brought them back, back down a load of trees and I believe they planted a couple mangoes back here behind me, a couple out there in front of the fence um, on the outside where they're getting some full sun. They were smaller trees. They haven't grown too much, um, but they have put on a little size. So this perennial penta bed with the katooks and the pagoda flowers is doing awesome. Sisu spinach filling in really good. There's a citrus that we actually planted on the last phase. Japotacaba, that is the red one. 
putting on some new growth. And I want to say we brought another Jupoticaba with us this time. And Mark picked a couple of those up also. This area is just filled out greatly um, as far as porterweed what goes, as far as the perennial peanut has done in this area really, really well. Goldenrod just getting done flowering. Goldenrod flowering. Grimmy Chama looking pretty happy. Maybe getting ready to push some flowers and some buds and some really tall spikes on these um, these goldenrod. And typically after they flower like this, we'll cut them back a little bit and just try to keep them shorter so they're not seven, eight foot tall. Just kind of doing a little chop and drop, maintaining them in this zone. Passion fruits have not gone bonkers yet, but we are just getting into rainy season and summer. Got a lot of them planted on the trees around here. They're getting ready to head up to the top. So guys, real big rule of thumb that we do, we do typically Trees that are evergreen, that do not lose their leaves, can really handle this dappled light. Like I mentioned, citrus, definitely where it wants to be. This zone we're doing out there is all full sun, so it's given us the ability to put in some stone fruits, some peaches, some plums, some mulberries, um, a lychee, some other things that we just already had included in going into that area, but mostly things that are gonna lose its leaves in the winter time, um, you know, when they're going deciduous. I see some uh, Suriname cherry over here. This is the uh, plant zone. Got some more Mexican sunflower, some caliandra, some more peanut. Looks like some Stokes Aster, cranberry hibiscus. Here's more citrus. A couple more Monstera, uh, Vitex. And that is the plant zone. And here's some more of that mulch that Mark has sourced. Uh, another thing on this site, we didn't have to haul the sod away. Anytime you have a place on your property, you can let that stuff sit, break down. It's also gonna save a bit of cost. I would probably pay you know, 100, 125 bucks a load. That's probably two loads to dump that, not counting time and fuel. So there's, you know, there's also cost savings there. So calling these tree guys, Googling who's local to you, being a thorn in their side, um, constantly staying on top of them is key to getting this. This is what will save you money. This was, you know, already here, ready for us. So we show up. We don't have to worry about sourcing the mulch. Also don't have to worry about buying the mulch. So all of this was free mulch. Um, just from calling and bugging these guys and finding out who's local to your house So that main line started over here on this corner ran all the way down along the fence bumped up across the fence Came across the driveway and we have it all the way to the far east side of that bed the guys are working on and eventually Mark's property does go all the way out to the road there with an easement There's more room up there on the right to plant so we left the stub out for the irrigation so we can always drag that further down and along Mark's been doing some spreading of mulch on his own. All of this side of the driveway, he's been putting the palmy stuff, which is great for the bamboo. They're really gonna love the silica in that. As it breaks down right now, it might look a little bit messy, but as it breaks down, it is gonna get flatter. And there is an established row of bamboo that was here. We're gonna bring some fertilizer for that, try to get it greened up a little bit. It does have a little bit of a yellow color to it. And I'll show you this low zone out front. This is a single stemmed black bamboo here on one side of the gate. Not super established. They're not very, very cold hardy. They're also not very wind tolerant. We'll see how that guy does in the long term. Sweet almond. Oh, and they got the fruit trees out here. Oh. PP on the mounds. What's up? Are you the uh, personal packer? I am. They or the permaculture purist? Which one is it? Both, why not all of it? Why not, why not be do. them all, huh? All of it. PP across the board? It'll tell you you're gonna get swole legs on this job. Oh, is that how it works? I see some loquats, some more mangoes, tamarind, groomy chama, longan, strawberry tree. What is that, another mango down there? Seven gallon on the end. Oh, there he is. Hold on, hold on. New York City in the house, I huh? Pause my music so you don't get a copyright oh. strike. I don't want you to get a copyright Avocado, strike. and that's one that it's really important. So knowing this is a wet zone, knowing the driveway is high, knowing we get in the rainy season, water can sit in this area. Yes, it might only be a few hours, but six hours alone with avocados and standing water can kill them. So getting these trees up a little higher, making those roots go down to search for the water, having them up high enough for when we do have those wet days is gonna help to protect them and let them survive those wet events. Oh, got mounds. So we used about one yard of fill dirt, topsoil. Um, this was supposed to be like a clean fill and 
I always get the question, what to use for fill dirt when you're raising trees? And we don't want to use a big load of compost. We really don't want to use topsoil. We want to use something that's well draining. Typically, I'm okay with sand. So still going to mend those trees. Still going to put the biochar, compost, azomite, fertilizer, mulch. Um, and we just want to get them up high enough where they're going to drain a little bit better when we do have those rain type events. So Ryan's just in the middle of laying some trees out. Looks like a seven gallon mulberry just hit the ground. Persimmons with fruit on them. Permaculture princess over here. Oh no. Oh, no. That PP is going all ways to Sunday. What do we got here? Giant plum? Giant plum. Big old plum tree. Looks like we got a Gulf Beauty, Scarlet Beauty, a couple different varieties of mulberry, and a peach. And another Barbados cherry. So stay tuned. I'll be back in two days. It is Tuesday. The guys started yesterday. It's supposed to be wrapped up by Thursday. So we'll get back over here when this place is a little bit more finished up, a little bit prettier looking, and do another follow up for you guys. So stay tuned. Whoa! So we are almost at a wrap here. Phase two for our friends at Boaters Republic is coming together. The guys did some pretty cool stuff out front. Figured I'll come out here first, show you what's growing on, show you what's new. Got some mulch around the existing sweet almond, black bamboo. Um, they got a little creative here. I told them to use the logs that were in the pile as kind of a border and really like what they did, especially on the far end where it's a little longer, how they kind of mixed it up a bit. And there's mangoes in here, Barbados cherry, strawberry tree, a couple different varieties of plum, longin, loquat, um, mulberry, um, persimmon with fruit on it. I think there's probably about three mangoes, sweet tamarind, um, avocado, another persimmon, big old longin. What is this guy? This is a uh, pink tababuya. So we got a big flowering tree in the center and a couple more mulberries over here. And this is the side with the really cool border. Can't really see the mounds now, but all these trees are about a foot off of grade, getting them up really high. And here's some of those logs that came in that free mulch. And that's something I'll tell you, Mark said, to get the tree guys out here, they asked, will you take logs? Um, and he said, yeah, sure, I'll take logs. And then the logs became overwhelming. He told him I really wanted clean mulch. Um, now he's getting clean mulch. So some of those logs that were left over, not only is he splitting those, using those as firewood, um, you know, we're using them for a border in a couple of places here. So we've really noticed that the peanut crushed it on this job. So we used mostly perennial peanut going back in. The mimosa just didn't do as well. Um, it's not gone, it just hasn't, you know, it's not as vigorous. It hasn't grown as quick here. And it's different from every site we go to. We don't know, is peanut gonna do better? Is the mimosa gonna do better? Um, you know, every site just tends to be a little different. You know, we have ones that the mimosa just absolutely crushes it and the peanut does nothing, the rabbits eat it. Um, doesn't seem to be a, a huge rabbit population here, so that is great. Beautiful pond and Mark, the homeowner, uh, told me today that the neighbors wanted to spray some heinousness on this pond to control whatever that weird stuff is growing on the bottom, which you guys can't really even see. It's not a problem. Um, but there is, there's companies that use machines to do that, that'll actually cut that stuff out of there. You don't have to spray chemicals on there, um, you know, which is so important, guys. Here in Florida, as you know, with the channel, you know, we promote organic agriculture. And you know, luckily, they're not using organic fertilizers on the lawn, which isn't causing any type of algae problems out here. But there is some type of hydrilla stuff growing on the bottom. Not quite sure what it is. I think he gave me the name of it earlier, but you guys ready to step in and see what's growing on here? Let's check this place out. I did bring the homeowner about four bags of organic fertilizer. Talked about it in the last uh, clip I made here about the bamboo being a little yellow. Also brought him about 25 Mexican sunflower that are gonna get planted back behind that bamboo where we have like that 10 foot gap, giving a little bit more of a visual barrier down here at the bottom. Also giving some more biomass chop and drop that can just get laid right in here on the bamboo. And let's go see what these guys are doing. Looks like we got the rest of the micro irrigation expanded. A couple plants to go in the ground still. A little bit of mulch. A lot of bit of mulch. A lot of bit of mulch. You guys, we get, to the, we get to the tail end of this one. Oh yeah. Putting in some Stokes Aster, making this place look beautiful. You oh, know how yeah. we do. Oh yeah, beautiful natives, huh? Oh yeah. What do you think? Is it fun being back here, E? Oh, it's real nice. Real In this nice? shade canopy. You enjoy this site? I enjoy it a lot. Okay. The place is beautiful. Clients are great. A little better than what working out in the front yard, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Kyle, what's growing on over here, man? Come on, man. We got everything growing on. Everything. Food. We got uh, nitrogen fixers. We got pollinators. A lot going on. 
Yeah. A little bit of mulch? Yeah. Oh, no, nah, it's a lot of mulch. A lot of mulch? Yeah, look, you can see a pile over there. There's a whole bunch left to go on. Oh, you mean he's got too much mulch? There's never, there's never too much That's mulch. That's what I like to There's hear. never there's too no much thing, mulch. Right? No such thing. Matter of fact, I don't know if it's still up. Hold up. Oh, oh, what do you got for me? What do you got for me? You got some fungi? Yeah, there was a... It already burnt off, didn't it? I didn't, somebody might have buried it. What? Look at all that mycelium. Don't touch the internet. Don't touch the internet. Yeah. Oh. All that from mulch. Oh. Yeah. Fungal life. That's the stuff I like to see. It gets me excited. It's 2022. If we don't have internet out here in the soil, what do we have, <laughs> huh? Woo! Just a dream. All right. Not even a dollar. Just a dream. All right. It's coming along. Ryan's down there. Hey, I'm coming for you. You better stay put. All right. Hey, didn't you just finish a design course, dude? I did. How'd it go? It was amazing. You ready to start helping us? I think so. I think yeah. so. We're going to be talking about you here soon. I know. I'm going to be all, all over the front news. That's Designing it. Designing for Green Dreams. Ethan Cohen. You ready? Yeah. Are, you, Are ready? you guys ready? Okay. I'm ready. Let's do this, E. Let's do this. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, wait. Didn't we plant some citrus here? Some citrus? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, not citrus, depending on what you're growing it with. If you're growing in diversity, if you're growing in great soil, growing in understory, then it's citrus. Mm -hmm. If you're growing it in a monocrop and a, and without a polyculture, then it's citrus. So this is this is citrus. This is the real this is the real deal. Dude, it was almost like I prepared for that question. That was well done. Come dude. on, baby, this is what I do. That's what I wanted to hear, Kyle. All right. <laughs> Woo! We got some turmeric out here, some monstera. What else? We brought him an ice cream bean. Yeah, nice Papa. Oh, oh, you said the P word. Uh-oh. North American Anona. What do you know about Papa? They're delicious. I mean, you kind of live up there in the mountains. That's probably like one of the only subtropicals you can grow, right? We're pushing our luck. Okay. You know? Hey, I want to let you know I'm coming for you. I'm going to do employee highlight videos, and uh -oh. I'm coming up to the mountains. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You kind of live up in the woods. Way up there. Are you ready to tour me around? I'll show you. You're going to show us? I'll show you. No stage fright. <laughs> okay. Woo! All right, all right. Getting that perennial peanut out, getting that Stokes Aster laid down. More Japota Cabas in the ground. Pretty cool uh, variegated spiral ginger. And they are at almost a wrap phase. Guys, we got some rain coming in. I had to grab the camera here while I got a chance. I'll definitely be doing a follow up here. Just kind of show, wanted to show you what they've got in the ground, how this is coming along. Um, I also want to do a little feature here on the Zone 1 Veggie Garden, so I'll be back. They've got some pretty cool raised beds in the backyard. Obviously this beautiful seating area, chicken zone over there, and everything's filled in from the first phase. You guys remember we planted this in the middle of the winter. They had frost after we put this in and all these plants are back up, doing really well. Got some pups on the nanners and things are filling in nicely. Whoa, and here's that monster log pile I was just telling you about. And this was when he initially started getting mulch and just getting those guys to show up. You know, and it got to a point, hey, I've got too many logs. Um, I want pure mulch. And that's where that mountain Kyle was talking about. I'm gonna go over there and show you and we'll wrap this up. Stay tuned. Whoa! Game changer right here, huh? Huh? E, what do you think? What would you do without this thing? I don't know. Sweat my ass off even more. I'd almost like to call it like my number one employee. Would you uh, you know, be a jealous <laughs> no, at all? Or uh, you, you, you would agree or what? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I earned that title this Whoa. year. I thought, I, didn't I see it hanging up in your office? Uh, you got, <laughs> you got a plaque up there, but number one, I, don't, I mean, he's I, like, I'd agree. This he's thing like takes the cake. He's employees right here. It is. Okay. Absolutely necessity. Has necessity. he let us down? Has he broke down? No. Not at all. Not Things at runs all. great. If you, if you remember to grease it, you got to maintain these tools. All right. These are the tools we work with. All right, it's important to what we do and to get this stuff done. You got to maintain them. So did I hear maintenance is key? Maintenance is key. Can I get a PP? PP. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right, shows up every day, starts up every time. Game changer. All right, so the sod that came out of the project has just gotten piled up over here for composting. Did a little bit of tree trimming on those oaks for the homeowner. Didn't even mention that. Just kind of open up, let a little bit more light in as you come in. And here is that mountain of mulch that he has sourced. Couple of logs down on this end, but for the most part it is fairly clean. Let's see what the other side looks like. It's almost like a windrow. Oh, got mulch. All right, so we got a good little pile going here. I hope you guys enjoyed this phase two follow-up and I'm gonna come back for another follow-up, probably what, August, September. 
show you how this is filled in before we get into the winter time. Maybe even be back for another phase because I'd say there's still a phase three um, and a phase four to happen here. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Please drop me a like, a comment down below. It really helps the al al algorithms with these videos. Um, and most importantly, guys, 2022, start a garden, rip out that grass, get out there and pound some dirt.